In today's lecture, we are going to continue with section six, our section on double integrals. And in particular, we're going to look at some, some um, applications of double integrals. So we're going to look at um, mass, first moments, and center of mass in 2D, and moments of inertia, aka second moments in 2D. So these are some um, important problems that arise in physics and engineering and applied science. Um, so we're going to see how we can use double integrals to um, determine these quantities that vary in two dimensions. Now, next week when you go on to triple integrals with Jim Franklin, you'll be able to calculate masses of solids and um, uh, center of mass of, of three-dimensional objects. So you can think of this as a little stepping stone to sort of the next dimension. OK, so let's talk about center of mass first. So many systems behave as if their um, mass was concentrated at a single point. And this point is called the center of mass. Now, physics students, I'm sure you know, um, you're very experienced with these sorts of things. Um, You can think of the center of mass, at least in very simple terms, as a balance point. If I've got a piece of paper or something and I want to balance it, well, I'd need to put my finger in the, the center of mass, I guess, for it to balance. Now, it's important to locate this center of mass so we can not only understand the behavior of the system, but also to control it. So let me give you a simple example. Um, when engineers design uh, Formula One cars, they have to think about the center of mass of that car. And they want it to be as low as possible so the car corners as fast as it can. Okay? Um, here's a couple of other examples in the, in the uh, pictures. Here's a, here's a spanner just being slid along a table or a floor. And it's spinning around. Well, it's actually spinning about its center of mass. And here's our um, solar system. The planets are sort of rotating around their collective center of mass that lies within the sun. So they're just some general problems. So what we're going to do with our double integrals is determine the center of mass of a thin, flat plate where you have some sort of density function um, uh, associated with that. The, 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 that plate. So it might be a disk of aluminium, a sheet of metal, something like that. Okay. Now, strictly speaking, a material's density is its mass per unit volume. But if we're working in two dimensions, how do you measure volume? Well, we, we can't really. So, for our um, study today, we're going to use units that we can measure. So, for thin plates, we're going to use mass per unit area. So, where might you come across that? Well, you think of paper. Okay, when you buy paper, it's in uh, GSM, right? The, the um, I guess, the rating. Anyone know what it stands for, GSM? Grams per square meter, right? Okay, that's that's an example of um, the uh, density of the paper that you're buying. Okay, it's very thin, so you can't really talk about the volume. Maybe you can, I don't know. Um, okay, so we're also not only we're going to talk about um, a little bit about these density functions, but we're going to talk about the first moment of a body, and um, essentially it tells us about the balance and um, about the torque the body exerts about different axes, for example, in a gravitational field. So here are some um, important formulae involving double integrals. You've got some two-dimensional plate, and let's say it's, it occupies some region R, so you've got something like this. So I'm just drawing a rectangular plate to be real simple. 
and I'm just going to draw it in the xy plane. And at each point in that region R, I've got a density associated with that point. So for each x, comma y in the region R, I've got a, a, a density value associated with that. So here are some formulae for the mass, the first moments. So this m sub x is not a partial derivative. It's just the first moment of the plate about the x-axis. m sub y is just the uh, first moment of the plate about the y-axis. And then you have the center of mass, where you're dividing the, the moments by the mass. So I'm, I'm gonna actually, we're going to talk a little bit about where these formulae come from. OK, so it's the same old story. You've got your two-dimensional region. You slice it up. Look at the little sub-rectangles and then um, uh, uh, use them and then sum up to get the, the whole um, picture. So let me just draw in another little rectangle. What we're going to do is slice it up. And just choose some sort of sub rectangle. Let's just choose that one there. Okay, now the cuts are going to be uniform. So you don't need all these, these messy subscripts. And I'm going to choose a sample point in this rectangle. Okay, so that, that little sub-rectangle is going to have area delta x times delta y. That will just denote by, say, delta a. You don't really need these subscripts here again. Okay. Now, if these rectangles are small enough, the density of that little rectangle is approximately going to be a constant, as long as the density function is well behaved. Okay? It's not going to change hugely on a little rectangle. So what we can do is say, all right, well, if the density in this little rectangle is, a, is approximately equal to um, delta of p of ij, where this delta is just the density function, then I can use the following simple relationship to come up with this approximation. Okay, usually it's density equals mass over volume, but we're in two dimensions here, so it's density equals mass over area. Okay, so I've got an approximation for, um, uh, I guess, my little sub-rectangle. I want to work out the total mass of the whole rectangle, I'll, sub, I'll sum up all those little bits on each little sub-rectangle. Okay, so the mass of the whole plate is just the sum. So what I'm doing up here is I'm pulling this delta a up here, and I'm summing both sides, OK? Now, in the limit, this double, integ this double summation is just going to, you know, we, we, as long as it converges, we would write it in the following way. OK, so that's a rough, um, uh, a, a rough justification. OK, so this is converging to here. Now, what about the, um, the other formulae? Well, I've, I've asked you to justify the other formulae for the moments and, and the center of mass. Well, let me just... Um, let me just go back to here first. If 
I just cover those up, right, and my points say here, if I cover that up, y times the density function is just the distance from this point to the x-axis times the density function. Okay? I can use the same slice and sum technique as I did with the mass and, and get the double integral for the first moments, okay, about each axis. So essentially, just think of these as, you know, um, when we, in simple physics, the first moment is just, if the mass is concentrated, it's just the distance times the mass, right? But here, here it's a little, bit, um, a little bit different. You can use those formulae, though, to, to get these two um, double integrals. Alright, now like I said, we do have quite a bit to go through today, so I have um, uh, pre-written some of the solutions today, because I want to make sure we get through them all. Usually I don't do this. But here's a good example that you might get, say, in the, in the, part, in the end session exam. Okay? I've got a metal plate that covers a triangular region shown below. And the density function here is given by 6x plus 6y plus 1 for each point. Calculate the plate's mass, first moments, and center of mass. So essentially, we, we want you to apply all of the ideas from the previous slide. So the first thing we need to do, if you're going to use double integrals, we need to describe that triangular region somehow. So um, the way I've done it, I think I've just, yeah, I've just drawn my vertical line that way and then looked at where it enters and where it leaves and then how far across you have to shift that line to cover the whole, the whole triangular region. So that vertical line enters the region at, at the line y equals 0. It exits at y equals 2x. So y is going to be between 2x and 0. And then to move this left and right, I just go over the interval 0 to 1 to sweep out the entire triangular region. Now you can describe it the other way using a horizontal line, but that's just, that's just the way I chose. Okay, it's up to you. So, if we are going to use these formulae, well, First of all, let's get the mass, and then I can work out my moments, and then I can find my center of mass. So this is a quite an involved problem. So the mass is just the double integral of the density function. So let's just you know replace delta xy with this, and then I am just wanting to perform this double integral. Now, we, we did these in the previous class, so the integrations shouldn't, shouldn't worry us too much. It's just a matter of doing the inside integral first, and then moving on to the outside integral. So I would integrate the inside integral with respect to y, holding everything else constant, and then integrate whatever I get with respect to x. Okay, so if I integrate, well, that's going to become 6xy, that's going to become 3y squared, that's going to become 1, uh, sorry, y. And then all I need to do is plug in y, so replace y in here with 2x, replace y in here with zero, well the second term is going to be zero, take one away from the other. So I'll get something like that. Now, you can see that 
the problem now has been reduced to a single integral. So just an integral that we know from school. So it's just integration like we would do at school. So we're going to integrate this. This will become something like 8x cubed. This will become something like x squared. And then I'll plug in my numbers. Now, we're not given any units for our density function. So, you know, the, the, in my opinion, the answer 9 is OK there. If you want to put 9 units, that's OK too. OK? The density function might be in something like, I don't know, grams per square centimetre or something like that. Grams per, you know, kilograms per, per square metre or something like that. But it's, it's not, not specified in that particular example. OK, so it's not very different from what we saw yesterday. It's just that um, it's a slightly more uh, semi-applied problem in its, in its nature. So that's the first part. Calculate the mass. Tick. We need to next calculate the first moments about the axis. So this is the first moment about the x-axis, the first moment about the y-axis. <coughs> So essentially, it's the same integral that we did before, or integrand, except we've just got an extra factor of y. So the region of integration is identical. It's just I've got an extra factor of y in the, in the integrand. Again, nothing too crazy there. Just plow through it. Do the, again, do the inside integral first, and then move on to the outside integral. Okay, so let me just show you from the one I've prepared earlier. Of course, you don't have to copy all this down if you don't want to. I've just put most of it in there for completeness. OK, so you can see I get down to a single integral. Again, something that we easily um, can deal with. So I make the, inter the final integration, and you'll get 23 on. OK, so what else do we need? Well, that's the first moment about the x-axis, what we need is the now the first moment about the y-axis. So the idea is very similar. All you have, you replace this with a y and the x, uh, sorry, the y with an x in the integrand. Now I haven't done all the details for that one, because I don't, you know, I don't want you copying down just blindly here. You should, um, Put the missing details in if you can for these ones. So if you ever confuse these, which we, I've forgotten the formulae for the, you know, the first moment about the x-axis. It's always the de density function times the distance to that axis integrated. Okay. All right. So I've got my first moments. The last thing is to do is to calculate the center of mass of our little plate. So we just take the moments and divide them by the mass, and these are our sort of coordinates for our center of mass point. OK, so sometimes we signify the center of mass just by x bar and y bar, the coordinates.
So we get these two sort of coordinates here. Any questions? It's quite a long problem. That's why I've sort of pre-prepared it, because I, I didn't want to spend like 20 minutes um, grinding that one out. Will you have to remember the formulae for the mass, first moments, center of mass? Um, uh, yes, I think, I think you will have to remember that. I'm not sure. Maybe Jim Franklin will come along and say something else. But um, um, we'll let you know a bit closer to the final exam. So that's our uh, first moments. The second part um, of this double integral application lecture is all about the second moments, moments of inertia. So suppose you've got a shaft that's rotating. We may be examining the, um, the characteristics of that shaft and be interested in how much energy it will take to accelerate the shaft to a particular angular velocity. And this is where the so-called second moment of inertia arises. Now, the moment of inertia of a shaft resembles in some ways the inertia of a locomotive. What makes a locomotive hard to stop or to start moving is its mass. What makes the shaft hard to st start, uh, stop or start moving is its moment of inertia. Okay. These are probably the two um, most important formulae for this section. Again, imagine delta some density function here. The second moment about, for example, the x-axis is just the square of the distance, the integral of the square of the distance to the x-axis times the density function and the and double integral. Okay, it's the same, or very similar with the y-axis. So let me just roughly justify that for you again, just to, to show you, just give you a little rough justification where this, where this comes from. Now I'm just going to write this as x comma y. All right. Well, if you've got a mass that's concentrated at a point, the second moment about, say, an axis is just the distance squared to the axis times the mass. It's very similar with this. You can set up your double integrals like I did before. Just by using your slice and sorry, this is this y here. Slice and sum. You can see that the distance from say our sample point to the x-axis, the distance is just y units. Okay, it's y units above the x-axis. So if you square it, you get the y squared. And then, when you're doing your derivation, you can replace the mass 
with this. Okay? So you approximate the mass on your little rectangle and you again apply the um, density equals mass over area. Rearrange that, that's where the DA comes from in the limit. Okay? So these are, these are quite important. There's also um, a, a more general, a general um, double integral for the second moment about a line, L. We're not going to be too concerned with that. Okay, so if I've got to prioritise here, these are, these are important. This isn't that important. This is important. Okay, just the polar moment um, about the origin is just the sum of these two uh, second moments up here. Okay, so let's do a problem and see. Um, oh, actually, before we get to that, there's also, I've, I've just included these for um, completeness. These, um, again, they're not partial derivatives. They're just lengths. Okay, the so-called radii of gyration about certain axes. So where, where do these come from? Well, let's say, let's just look at the first one. Rx... is just the distance such that if I just rearrange this, I'll get this, right? Just sort of by squaring and, and um, rearranging. So this is just the distance from the x-axis at which all the mass of the object would have to be concentrated to um, affect the same moment of inertia. Okay, so you might have a disc, a circular disc that's rotating about in the xy plane, say about the z, the z axis. Right? The radius of gyration about the z axis for that would just give you the radius of a little ring. So that the both um, at that radius, the two um, uh, moments of inertia are the same. Okay, so you have the, the moment of inertia of the disc is the same as, as the moment of inertia of that little ring with this radius of gyration. Anyway, uh, these aren't super important. This is important. This is important. This is important. Okay, there's no guarantee you'll get those in the exam, um, like on a formula sheet or something. I think the other ones, we'd give them to you. So we wouldn't ask you to remember the radius of gyration about certain axes. Okay, all the um, I sub L. All right, so let's have a look at those. Again, it's not, it's not that difficult. All, all, we, all we're integrating here is Y squared times the density function or X squared times the density function. Okay, so here's another example. What? Yes. Okay, so it's the same plate as before, really. I think it is, anyway. Um, same density function. So all we're asked to do is calculate these second moments. So we describe our region and 
for I sub x, we're just going to use the formula on the previous page. So I take my identity function, multiply each term by y squared, and then I would just treat it as a normal double integral. Okay, so a little bit more uh, calculations this time, not that, many, that, not that much more. And so again, I sub in my y equals 2x, sub in my y equals 0, take one away from the other. Of course, y equals 0 is going to give you 0, so that's not going to affect things very much. Break it down to a single integral, and then do the final integration. Okay, that's I sub x. With I sub y, we'll just take this, multiply each term by x squared, and then do the double integral again. Can you see now why I'm not doing all these questions live? Because there's just there's a lot to write today. Anyway, I'll, I'm not going to do I'm not going to show like do all of this for the whole lecture. Don't worry. So again, putting in the limits of integration, break it down to a single integral, and doing the final integration. I sub y is calculated to be 53 on 10. So, now I want to take the polar moment, I sub naught, the second moment, I guess, about the origin. So we just add these two values together. Okay, so add this to this, and we'll get this. So as you can see, it's a pretty, it's a long problem. It's not that difficult, but you just got to keep the um, momentum flowing. So I would think if this was an, a question in the um, in the final exam, it'd be there's a, you know quite a few marks in there. So you know because there's lots of, lots of steps where you can fall over really. Okay. Um, let's look at the construction of um, so-called I-beams. Is there everyone, anyone still going with this one? Anyone? No? Okay. Now, this is quite, um, quite interesting. You might have seen, I mean, there's a lot of building going along uh, around at the moment. There are Tyree buildings going up just down the, down the road. In construction, you might have seen these kind of beams holding up certain structures. Anyone, does that, anyone recognize that kind of beam? Anyone? Yeah. It's called an I-beam, okay, because its, it's cross-section is like a letter, I, capital I. Now... The moment of inertia plays a role in how much, for example, a horizontal metal beam will bend under a load. Now the stiffness of the beam is some constant times the moment of inertia of a typical cross-section of a beam, about the beam's longitudinal axis. So here's the, here's the axis here. And there's two beams here. One's an I-beam, the, the top one, and one's not. And it's claimed that the I-beam is actually stronger, beam A, is stronger than beam B. Well, the justification for that is that the greater the moment of inertia, well, this, the, the, the stiffer the beam. 
and the less it will bend under a given load. And crucially, the I-beam holds most of its mass away from its axis to maximise the value of its moment of inertia. Can anyone sort of suggest how you would, how you would informally prove that using a double integral? Well, let's, let's have a look at... Oh, well, well, yeah, yeah, you could, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I guess what I'm asking here is why is that cross-sectional profile stronger than that cross-sectional profile? Why is there a sort of greater moment of inertia with that profile than that profile, the second moment? Anyone know? Well, it goes back to the actual formula for the second moment of inertia about the, um, the, I guess, the polar moment. Let me see if I can find it. Aha. This here. Okay. Now, let, let's, for example, um, uh, imagine that the density of our beam is constant. So that so the, the the delta here is just a constant, right? You can take that out the front and you get the inter double integral of x squared plus y squared. Now what surface is 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 the surface z equals x squared plus y squared? What surface is it? It's a parabol a paraboloid, right? So If I've got this paraboloid, so this axis is now, say, this axis here. The double integral of this just gives us, over some region, gives us the volume below the surface and above some region in the xy plane. How do I maximise that volume? Well, the region of integration has to be as far as you can get it away from the origin. So in this case, it's like a, like a letter I in the... Okay, it's really badly drawn, but you get the idea. Okay? If you drew like a circle or a rectangle, there'd be less volume above that rectangle and below that surface. So that's kind of one way of justifying informally that actually this beam is going to be stronger than this beam. Okay, maybe that should be like there. Okay. Mm. Alright, so I will do one question. The centroid. Determine the centroid of the shaded region. Now we've seen this region before. And that's actually what that dot represents. That, that dot actually is the centroid. Can anyone remember what, what's a centroid? Sounds kind of centroid. I will get you. Anyone remember what, what's a what's a what's a centroid? It's kind of like it's so, so we're working in two dimensions here. Centroid is kind of like it's not a center of mass. It's a center of area. Okay, so think of it as a center of area, the centroid. So there's no density function associated with this per, per se. So I always think of these as center of area. Now, in this case, we can still use the ideas from the previous slides, i.e. the center of mass, but we can just take the density function to be a constant. Okay? If the density functions are constant out, I can pull this out. When I divide them, the, de the constant density is going to disappear. Okay? So I'm just going to take the density function to be 1 in this case. You don't it doesn't have to be 1. 
I'm just going to choose it to be 1 because 1 is a simple number. And then I'm going to use the, um, the center of mass type, type formula. Okay? So, so I'm just going to take the density function to be identically, identically equal to 1. So the coordinates of the centroid are the following. Now, but when I write the M there, the mass on the bottom, I, I really mean the area. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Now, M is just the area. So let's call this, um, say, region R. Okay, if our density function is 1, then oh, this is just the area. The area of our region R. Okay, so if I, I think we did the we did the area of this last time, didn't we? So I'll just write down the double integral and not not put in all the details. One sixth. Okay, so let's work out the uh, m sub x and the m sub y. So if our density function is equal to 1, then I'm just having this integral here. So I'm multiplying by 1. So essentially I'm just integrating y over the region r. So it's just um, so if I integrate here, I'll get something like a half y squared, and then. I won't put in all the details. And secondly, m sub y, well, that's just the double integral of rx times the, del the density function, which is just 1. So we're integrating 0 to 1, x squared to x. So now I integrate x with respect to y. So I'll get yx uh, here. And then going through the normal motions, I'll get a 12. So let's take our information and combine it and find our centroid. So this, the x component is just this over this. Okay. That's going to give you a half. The y component is just this over this. Oh, sorry, this over this. Uh, so that's going to give you something like two bits. So there is our. Centroid.